Good morning, good morning, South Florida. Hello, world. This is Robert Henderson, Jr., certified financial planner, certified tax coach, live in the beautiful studios of WNMA, 1280 The Man. Yes, 1280 The Man, and we've been here all year. Um, I'm riding out solo today. My co-host, sister-in-law, business partner, Linda V. Harris, she's not in today. I'm not sure if she's going to be able to call in, um, but she's not here today. Uh, Keith, Professor Keith, he's in Atlanta taking care of some business. So you guys got me today. That's okay. I'm ready for you. I think I have some good stuff for you this morning. You know, it is really chilly on a Saturday morning in South Florida, in Miami, in Doral, to be exact. I got my jacket Got my boots on. As a matter of fact, uh, me and Isaac here, my cameraman, because we are streaming this live on YouTube Live. And those of you all who don't get a chance to, you don't have access to YouTube, you can always go to the AM station, 1280 AM. And if you missed it, you can re, uh, also re-listen to this program and, and a lot of our other shows at our website. And it's at www.thehenderson.com financialgroup.com. Let me say it again. It's a fantastic website. And I think you'll really like it. Lots of information. You can look, you can catch up on all of our past broadcast shows, our radio shows for not just this year, but last year and two and three years ago. So it's www.thehendersonfinancialgroup. Man, I tell you, we've had some week in the last week. You know, the market has really pulled back quite a bit. And I've always said, you know, for the last three years, actually since President Trump has been um, in the office, that the market is going to be volatile. It has been eking out a, a profit. 19, 2018 wasn't a profit, but 2019 was a profit. Um, 2020, I think, is still going to eke out a profit, even though we're having some pushback with this whole coronavirus. I mean, it's turning out to be a little bit more than they thought it was going to be. Uh, I still say that it's still with the amount of people that's in the world, 7 billion, 7.1 billion people in the world. And the amount of people that's in China, I mean, China has 1.4 billion people. I mean, to have uh, the amount of, of people who have infected, I mean, it, it is alarming, but uh, it's not as alarming as the media wants you to feel like it's alarming. Uh, even president Trump says that by April, it should all be gone away. I think because of the weather. So let's see, you know, if he can work his magic, um, We'll see. I mean, it's a, it's a, it is an election year. Uh, the Democrats are fighting hard against the Republicans. But I said the Democrats seem like they're going to shoot each other and really bash each other. Uh, by the time they are uh, going up against Trump, I think so many feelings are going to be hurt. <laughs> People are going to be so disappointed in what they said about each other. I don't know if they're going to come together as one. Oftentimes they don't. That's the way the Democrats role democratically you know they really they really uh wear their, their feelings on their sleeves and they combat each other at the same time they saying they're trying to get president trump out of the office as the market and the stock market and, and everything still booms and most people think about the economy uh, so i don't know this is some interesting times to be alive i'm really excited about being alive this year i'll be 62 years old and boy, I tell you, time flies. I mean, it really, really goes. I can't even believe them to be 62 years old this year. I mean, I still can remember when I was playing Little League Baseball, you know, when I was 10, 11 years old. I remember like it was yesterday. I always said, you know, I have a great, great memory. And that could be a, 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 an advantage and it also could be a curse. Because I can remember when Reebok stock came, first came out. I can remember when Reebok stock was much higher than Nike stock. I can remember when uh, Coca-Cola stock was much higher than Pepsi stock. I mean, I, I can remember all that like it was yesterday. So my memory really helps me in, in my field and what I do. But then again, some of the things you just can't forget, you know. I mean, you, 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 I just can't forget uh, my memory. Like I said, it, it could be a curse and it could be uh, advantageous to me. It has, it has served me well especially with uh, memorizing and exams and, 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 and being able to recall situations. It has helped me well to help me to where I am economically, at least. I would say as a person also uh, where I am now. So I'm, I'm very, very thankful for that. You know, since I'm here and I'm running out, I'm, I'm rolling solo, 
I don't have anyone uh, to balance this off. I'm going to use you, the audience. And I want to have a conversation with you because I, I was reading, I was studying. And also as I get clients, we get clients almost every day, new clients. And I mean, we, we get clients from all walks of life and all over the country, from Chicago, New York, California. And that's because, you know, we've done a very good job at the, the Henderson Financial Group. We've been here for over 30 years. And when we don't just uh, do investment planning, but we do total financial planning. So we look at every aspect of your financial affairs and we, we do life coaching and we have nice conversations with you. So we're not just, uh, Hey, how much money do you have? What's the minimum? And we're going to charge you a fee or get a commission. No, that's not really, really financial planning. Financial planning is looking having a whole a holistic approach, really looking at your whole uh, financial situation from beginning to the end, uh, your goals, your objectives. And, and, you know, a lot of people don't, don't understand that it's a difference between um, investment planning uh, and retirement planning. It really is. And, 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 and even here in two, 20, uh, 2020, 2020, a lot of people still don't quite understand um, financial planning. They, they, they don't. I mean, I have people to come into the office and they, haven't, they don't have their stuff together. And the first thing they want to do is ask me about marijuana stock. You know, marijuana stock or they want to ask me about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. When, when you, when it's kind of hard and that's not the right step to, to, to take when you're trying to get organized because, you know, as you get older and, 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 and you have to start putting things in order, you know, there's, there's proper foundation. You just can't drift. You just can't shoot from the hip and get the latest fad or the latest stock or the latest investment. I mean, some people are grown people and, and they steady going from the latest little trinket. And, and, and when you are trying to navigate your life, and have your life complete and have a, a nice uh, a, a retirement and have your, fi- have your financial house in order where you don't feel stressed out and worried about money, that takes planning. That's not just shooting from the hip. That's not just the latest investment, whether it's marijuana or cryptocurrency. You, 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 you have to have an organized plan. So I'm saying that because, you know, believe it or not, I believe and I've seen that uh, – we could probably help you more. You can help yourself more if you first plug up the holes in your financial situation, your financial strategy. Most people want more money. Most people say, if I just had more money, if I had more money. No, that, that's not always the answer. You know, some people are making $100,000 and they live in paycheck to paycheck. Some people are making $500,000 a year and they live in paycheck to paycheck. Some people, athletes, are making millions of dollars and they live in paycheck to paycheck. So that tells you that, that just more money is just not it. I mean, you can have more money and more problems. It still comes down to what plan do you have? What are your goals? What do you want? You can't just say, I want to be rich. That's just vague. That's abstract. You know, that, that's, that's drifting. You, you got to actually have a plan, a goal, a map, so to speak, in your mind, where you want to go. You want to get from this place to that place, and you have to navigate that. Can you imagine just going on a cruise ship and not having a destination, just turning, you know, getting the cruise and just floating? I mean, you'll drift, you'll wind up anywhere. But if you have to have a destination, you have to say, listen, this this is what time I want to arrive, this is where I want to go, and you charter those steps. And you would think that a lot of adults would know this, but no, no, no. I mean, you know, and, 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 and it's not so much because you've been taught a lot of the stuff is, is basics, basic, I just formats, it's basic understanding. And I always say just because you an adult, cause you passed 21 or you 31 or 41 or 51, you didn't really do a lot to age. I mean, as you, as time, as the day come up and days go down, you know, you automatically get older. But, you know, since you patting your back, you know, patting yourself on the back saying, ha, 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 you know, I'm 60 years old. But if you're 60 years old going on 20 years old or 16 years old, what's the difference? You didn't do that. I mean, time did that. And, and, we, and, and you, didn't, you didn't manage. You, you, you didn't control time. Time is going to go by whether you like it or not. So when you're boasting about, you know, you're an adult, you, are you really an adult? You might be an adult in numbers. But in, ter- in terms of uh, maturity and understanding and wisdom, you might not. A lot, of, a lot of adults are not adults. And I'm pretty sure a lot of kids see their parents acting like kids. They, they really do. So what I want to do today, I want to, 
to to talk to you listening audience as if you were, were, were coming into my office for the first time. And I'm going to ask you questions. I, I usually start off with about 10 questions because I want to hear you. I want to I want to see what's on your mind. And, 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 and radio listeners, I, I really want you to look and listen to each of these questions because I want you to answer them. As a matter of fact, I want, I want at least five of you all to call. Call the office. Call the hotline number. Let me give this call-in number because if you call, I'm going to give you out a free book, a book that I wrote and I put together, and it's called Spiritual Principles for a Prosperous Life. I'm going to say that again. It is called Spiritual Principles, principles that you should know whether you go to church or not, but there are, there, there, there are principles in this book about the basics of sowing and re- reaping. You know, what you sow, you will reap. And, that, and that's a law. That's, those are principles. You know, and this book is called Spiritual Principles for a Prosperous Life. And, you, and just because you're adult, you might have heard about these principles, but you, obviously, if you're not prospering, you're not practicing these principles. So I want you to, if you don't want to call the office and buy a book for $20, then I want you to call in and 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 ask some questions and have a conversation with me. You don't have to give out your real name if you basketball, but I'm not going to embarrass you. But but I I want you to actually um, you know call call in. Um, here's a hotline number. It's seven eight six six three three five nine two seven. Let me repeat that number: seven eight six six three three five nine two seven. The first five people that call in, I'm going to mail you a copy of spiritual principles, spiritual principles for a prosperous life. Now I'm going to, I'm going to all five, whoever first five call in, you're going to, you're going to get a free book. Okay. But I'm going to pick one of you all and I'm going to ask you some questions. Um, what I normally would ask you. And I want the rest of you, everybody else who's in radio land to pay attention. Cause I want you to think about, you know, these same questions that I am, uh, that I'm asking seven, eight, six, Six three three five nine two seven. I just got a uh, text. Let me see here. Oh man, I tell you, this is Miss Redhead. They're in Grenada. Greetings. Oh man, you can hear me and see me from Grenada, Miss Redhead. That is fantastic. All right. So, so we have a a, a caller. Hi, um, Mr. Henderson. My name is Eric. Your name is Aaron or Eric? Eric. E R I C, yes. E R I C, okay, Eric. I'm gonna. I'm going to. I want you to call my office on Monday so I can get this copy of this book to you called Spiritual Principles for a Prosperous Life. Now, uh, I don't want you to give okay. your telephone number out on the air, so therefore I'm gonna give you my my office number. So you call Monday. I'm writing your okay. name here, Eric, and then I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna tell my office to make sure they get. You just copy this book. Okay. My office number for you to call Monday is 305-825-1444. I'm going to repeat that just in case the pen went out. 305 is the area code. The number is 825-1444. Okay. All right. Eric, hold on. Let me get it. I got another caller here. Got to get there. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay. Give me a next caller. Caller. <clears throat> caller, what's your name? My name is Fabio. Fabio. Okay, Fabio. All right. All right, Fabio. I want you to call my office on Monday so we can get your free copy. Fabio, I'm writing your name down here. The number is 305-825-1444. You got that, Fabio? 305-825-1444. Fourteen forty-four. Hold on, Fabio. You have, you have another okay. caller. All right, all right. Hang up and listen, okay? All right, I got another okay. caller here. Let me get that. This is the third caller. Third Hi. caller. What's your name? Linda Dixie. Linda Dixie. How you doing, Linda Dixie? I'm fine. Good, good. You know my office number, right? Three zero five. Call and I'll make sure you get this copy of Spiritual Principles for a Prosperous Life. All right, hang on. Let me get the fourth caller. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Fourth caller. All right, give me your name. Um, Marlene Stewart, S T E W A R T. Okay, Marlene Stewart. Good, good. Yeah. I know you, Marlene Stewart. Okay, so I want you to call the office 305 825 1444. 
so you can get a copy of Spiritual Principle. I wrote your name down, so when you call, okay, that you just give me your address. Okay, hold on, hold on. Anybody All else? Right, okay. 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 All right. Thank you. That's four callers. I need one more caller. <laughs> I, I, I'm giving out five books. I need one more caller. That's four. Let me give the number out again. 786-633-5927. 786-633-5927. I was trying to get the fifth caller to call in so I can give you a free copy of my book called Spiritual Principles for a Prosperous Life. In the book, it talks about, you know, sowing and reaping. It talks about the difference between the subconscious mind and the... And the all right, I got a caller? Okay, good. Caller, you're your fifth caller. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Pat. Pat? The last name is East, E-A-S-T. Oh, I like that. Pat Me East. Too. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that, that. That stands out. Okay, Pat, I want you to hang on because you're the fifth caller, and I want to ask you some, some just some honest questions, okay? Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay, Pat, you got my number so you can call Monday and get your free copy of your book, 305-825-1444? 1444. That's right, 1444. So when you call, I'm going to already have your name, and you're just giving your address because I don't want you to give your information out over the, over the, over the air, okay? Yes, sir. Thank all right, you. All right, Pat. So I got 10 questions. So and I want you to just to be honest. I mean, you know, nobody knows you, but how you answer this other people, because the questions that I'm asking you, I want the other callers and other people who are listening. We have a lot of listening listeners all over the world, actually. And I, they, I want them to absorb the question also and ask themselves, how would they ask, answer the question? OK, Pat? Okay. Okay. So the first thing when you walk in my office and I first meeting you, I'm going to ask you, you know, how did you hear about us and, you know, and, 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 and what do you know, you know anything about my company? All right. So I'm assume that, you know, you, you call the radio and, and, and you walked in. So that's, that, that's the first question. I want to know where you come from. How did you hear, hear about me? Uh, was your referral or your uh, seminar or whatever? That's my first one. Then I, the second question then I'm going to ask you, Pat, I really want to find out. I'm going to ask you a question and, and it goes like this. What are you currently doing to prepare for your financial future? I want you to think about that. And I'm be honest, because you'd be surprised most people, they're not doing a whole lot and they don't know what to do. But I want to ask you, Pat, because I want everyone to hear, because they, when I'm asking you, I want them to ask themselves the same question. What are you currently doing to prepare for your financial future? And be honest, if you're not doing anything, tell me. What are you doing, Pat? Putting money away and savings every week. Okay, you're putting money away and you're saving every week. Okay, now let's go to to now when you're putting money away it, in your savings, is it is it mainly in, in a, just in a, a bank or credit union or where? It's in a bank. It's in a bank, and the reason why you put it in the bank because that's more secure for you. It's 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 simple. It's easy. Got it. It's simple. And I don't have I don't have the information I need to put it in a retirement plan okay i need more information that's good pat hey, listen that is fantastic and that's an honest and a lot of people feel like that and, and i don't blame you if you don't really know and you hear about so many different conflicting information it's because everybody is vying for every industry is vying to get your dollars i mean you really so you you don't really know so when you don't know when you're in doubt you just stand still you don't do anything you know the way to the bank you know the money's going to be there and a lot of people are, are still doing that okay so i got that now my third question that i'm gonna ask you pat is what do you like most about what you are doing are you happy doing that what do you like about it about the saving? Yeah, about just what you're doing about your financial life. Do you like anything? You feel good about it or what? Well, I feel I need to do more. You know you need to do more. How long have you been feeling like this and haven't done anything? Uh, a few years. So, 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 Pat, if you feel like that and it's coming to your mind, you know, your consciousness, why, why haven't you, you know, asked and seeked and knocked and, 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 and to investigate this? Why, why haven't you done anything? I get busy and and complacent, I guess. And that is true. You get busy and complacent, and then time goes by so fast, the next thing you know, it's the next day, the next week, and the next month, right? Yes, sir. Okay, now, tell me, what don't you like about your current financial situation? Wherever you are, tell me what you don't like about it. I don't feel secure in my future as far as re uh, retirement goes. How old are you? 
62. You're 62. Are you still working? Yes, sir. Do you plan to work uh, how many more years? Till 70. Till 70. Now, why did you pick that number 70? Because uh, I'm number. healthy enough to do it. But is that a good, just a good number? I mean, why not 72 or 75? Well, I, I don't know. But 70. You, 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 when Sounded you get, good. Sounds good. <laughs> Man, you're good. You're really good, East. <laughs> your, your answers are so genuine and honest, and you're right. And that's what most people say. Hey, 70, I mean, it sounds good. And when you get 70, you might go to 71. Depends on how you feel, right? Can you touch your toes still? I'm sorry? Can you still touch your toes? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so you probably go, but you're 62. You know, when you get 70, you know, you probably, how's it, your health is pretty basic, pretty good? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. So let me ask you another question. What would you like to see enhanced or improved about your financial situation? Tell me. Take a more minute. money. Oh, come on. You just everybody. Come on. That's just everybody. More money, more money. I mean, but, but I mean, if you had more money, what would you do with it? Well, when I retire, I just sit back and relax and not worry about the bills. It would give me this the peace of mind to know I can always pay my bills. So, so you're working not because you enjoy, you work it because you still need to be able to fit uh, your financial standard of living and you need the funds yes, right now? Yes, sir. What, did you start late? Start saving late? Yes, sir. Yes. And what was the reason you think, I mean, I mean, what is the reason that you think you say you start saving late? You just figured you had all the time in the world or what? Yeah, I got busy. Didn't pay much attention to it. You, do you have kids? <clears throat> They're grown. Oh, okay. I was, I was going to say, do they listen to you, you know, from any mistakes that you felt that you made? Are you able to share that with them and make sure that they don't make the same mistake or they don't listen? Yeah, they're, they're smart. They're smart? They, um, yeah, they learn from other people's mistakes. What about, are you married? You have a spouse? No, I'm divorced. Okay. All right. So, I mean, you, you, you just stand to living high? You, you know, how much money? Just, no. No? No, no. I'm easy going, laid back, relaxed. Do you own your home? Uh, no. Okay, so you're renting? Yes. And now you in South Florida, North Florida? Where are you? North Florida. Now, are you planning on staying in, in, in North Florida for, you know... In, Ever. Forever? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> what about Social Security? Are you collecting that now? No. And the reason why you're not collecting it now is because you feel by... At age, what, what age do you plan on taking it? Before 70? Uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Not anytime soon. Does it look good for you? Like the number, the Social Security amount that you're going to receive, is that going to help you a great deal with your overhead monthly expenses? Uh, it'll help a lot. How much more different do you think that you'll need? In other words, let's say if your, your Social Security is going to be paying you. Maybe we should talk about this off the radio. Oh, but they don't know you, Pat. <laughs> all right. All right. So, a lot of people know me. Oh, they do? You yeah. think they recognize your voice? Yeah, they recognize my name. Okay, all right, so let's go to the next question. What has been your experience with preparing for your financial future? Tell me your experience. My experience preparing for my financial future? Yeah. What, what, what? Well, that's why I'm calling you. Okay, so you're going to get the book, and after you read the book, then you're going to call me for an appointment, and we're going to go from there, right? Yes, sir. Sounds okay. good. Okay, listen, I got, I got a couple more questions for you. What would you ideally like to accomplish with the strategy? To making more money for retirement. Okay, and you got a, you got a number in your head that you need? Mm, not that I want to share on the air. But you have one? Sure. Okay. What, what's your process for making decisions? Tell me that. <clears throat> How do Listen, you... I'm going to have to go here because I'm getting out out of the car to where I'm going. Oh man, that was a good one. I wanted to know how you pro. Well, in order to make it pull the trigger, what do you? How what do you evaluate? One more. What's your process for making a decision? Mm, don't know. <laughs> Look at the information and go make a decision. Got it, Pat. Hey, thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Have a good day. You too. Yeah, Pat was great. Pat was great. That's it. Okay, so let me finish the question. No, matter of fact, let me start over because I want you all to, to, to look at these questions and I want you to think about them. What are you currently doing in preparing for your financial future, you know? What, what are you doing? Are you steady? And I want you to think about just, just nature. 
and think about how, how, how animals in the wild or even, you know, you know, I can't say animals in the zoo because, you know, either once or twice a day they get fed. That's pretty good. Somebody feeding you, all you got to do is eat and sleep and let people come and look at you and take pictures. The problem is that you're caged. You don't have the, fr- you don't have the freedom. It's always a drawback. There's always trade-offs. So when you're in the wild, that means that you are hunting. You either eat all of your nuts or you eat some of your nuts like a squirrel, but you put some nuts away. And like Pat was saying, you know, he started late. And a lot of you started late. A lot of us have started late. I mean, we really have. And some people are 60 years old and they still haven't started. I don't know why, but they haven't started. It's just as procrastinators, procrastinators, procrastinators. I'm not coming down on you because it's a fact of life. And there's millions of us that have. Anytime you hear a statistic that says that 50% of the 300 million people that is in America, 50% of them, 150 million people, don't have $1,000 saved, you know a lot of people are faking with all these cars and these new cars and leases and and you go to the gas station, everybody got a better car than you. They got a lot of credit card debt. So don't envy anyone. Your job is to get your financial house in order. Once you become at least 30 years old, and by the time you're 40, you should have did that, done that, got a T-shirt, you know how it goes. You should not be thinking about being impressed by your friends because you don't know. They cry at night. And let me tell you something so you all just really know this. Everybody who are, is doing something, productive, everyone who are worth their salt, everyone who you look at who's doing something legally. Now, I'm not talking about illegal because in South Florida, let me tell you something, more than half of the people, because I got DEA agents as clients, FBI agents as clients. I have undercover, real undercover agents and their clients, and they tell me these stories, man. I'm more than 50% of, I'm telling you, that all this luxury that you see driving down the streets in these houses, they're ill-gotten gains. They're being investigated. They're ill-gotten gains. So don't feel envious or feel bad. I mean, Facebook is doing y'all in, making y'all feel bad, but they lying too. All y'all should know about them Facebooks. That, you know, they lying, all these pictures, look how I'm living. So don't feel bad. Your job is to get your financial house in order. When you become 40 years old, at least 40 years old, you both to say, listen, I get it now. I done went to jail, I done got arrested, DUI, I done got married, got divorced, I, wrote, I married the wrong person. I mean, that's okay. Now you get, for, by, by the time 40 years old, there's no more excuses. You married the wrong person, okay? You, you, you got the girl pregnant, okay, and she, she's really, you know, it's a lot of things, you know, you had the wrong job. But you can reinvent yourself. It's, it's, it's your fault if you stay there. It's your fault. If you stay in the position that you are in, you can always reinvent yourself. By the time you're 40, you're supposed to say, listen, I ain't playing no more. You're supposed to be on your way to thinking about making buku cash. Yeah, that's our word of the day, buku. <laughs> Matter of fact, we used to say buku. I thought that was a slang. When you say buku, buku, buku means many, plenty, much. But the real pronunciation of it is uh, boko, bio. But it's buku. Let me spell it for you. B as in boy, E as in Easter, A as in apple, U as in uncle, C as in Charlie, O as in ocean, U as in uncle, P as in Paul. Buku. Buku. We used to say buku. Man, this guy got buku cash. This guy is buku. He has buku women or he has buku cars or buku money. Buku really is called boku. That's the really pronounced name, boku. It means many, numerous, and much. So you're supposed to be thinking about getting buku cash, buku money, buku assets. That's what be on your mind when you're 40 years old. You just by, when you turn 40, you just say, "Listen, y'all, not, I'm, I'm not playing no more. I'm not impressed with y'all." Okay, just because you got a Cadillac and you got a Mercedes Benz, so what? That means you got more bills than I. I still have me a 10 year old car. You're supposed to feel good about that, but I bet I got more savings than you. When you see your friends get all them trinkets and shiny stuff, that means they pay, they lose their money. They've, they've departed with their money. You're supposed to say, listen, I don't have all that stuff because I have money in the bank or I have money in my investments. I have money in my insurance plan. I have money in my real estate. That's what you should be doing, gathering assets, not spending, not spending. By the time you get 40, you're supposed to say, okay, I got it now. Let me start over. Okay. 
Let me, I got it now. So let me ask you all these questions, and I want you all to think about it, and I want you to have a come-to-Jesus moment with yourself. Even if you're in the bathroom or you're laying in the bed or wherever you are, I want you to think about it. What are you currently doing to prepare for your financial future? Now, if you're sitting there saying, duh, I'm just working, coming home, watching Netflix, whatever, shame on you. There's, in this book called Spiritual Principles for a Prosperous Life, there's something called reaping and sowing. And, and, and if you never heard of it, you don't understand it. Maybe you've heard of it, but you haven't ate it, you haven't drank it. You don't know what it really means. Let me tell you what it really means. If you're a farmer and you have tomato seeds and you sow tomato seeds in the ground and you cultivate and you're watering it, when, the tom- when, when, when it's time for harvest, you should expect tomatoes because if you planted tomato seeds you shouldn't expect lemons to come out of the ground because you sold tomatoes tomatoes so what should come out of the ground not watermelons but some of you all you're sowing nothing but you want something to come out of the ground what are you working on what i what are you sowing because let me tell you something, everybody's sowing. You sowing whether you now if you ain't sowing nothing, guess what? That's why you get nothing. If you sowing weeds, that's what guess what? You're gonna get weeds. What are you sowing? What are you doing? Everybody who's prospering today, that means that they did something earlier, last week, last month, last year, five years, or ten years. When you lay down with the woman last night. And the next month, you're going to know what you sold. If you got a baby coming or you didn't, but you did it, but it ain't coming out the same day, you sow and then you reap it. That's how life is. That's everything. I want you to think about that. What are you doing? So answer the question. What are you currently doing in preparing for your financial future? Okay. Then I want you to go back and I want you to, the next question is, write this down. What do you like most about what you're doing? So if you ain't doing nothing, tell me why you like that so much. If you ain't doing nothing, tell me you're just going working, coming back home. You know you got 24 hours in a day, but you're working for the man for eight hours, and I don't know what you're doing for the, okay, okay, I give you eight hours of sleep, and most of the people not sleeping eight hours, okay? You're working eight hours, and then you eight hours and you're sleeping. So what's the other eight hours you're doing? Duh, I don't know. You need to get a grip. This is your life, man. You got to say, I ain't playing. Because let me tell you something. In America, we're going toward the haves and the have-nots. You're either going to be having, you're going to be rich, have some money, or you're going to be poor. And this middle class is sinking in the middle, man, and the situation is set up for that. You're either going to have or you're not going to have. You're either going to be master or you're going to be slave. And I ain't telling my cousin the color of your skin, because we're talking about money, green. So what are you doing? Ask yourself. You don't have to say it out loud. And what don't you like about your current financial position? Tell me what you don't like about it. See, most people say they need more money, more money, more money. But when I sit down with people, it's as though you have a cup and the cup have holes in it. And every time you put in fluid water in the, hole, in the cup, you got a lot of leakage. So really, while you're trying to invest in the marijuana stock, you know, let me tell you something. The poorest people want to buy. I don't understand. The poor, you know, the people who have the least money come to my office and want to say, okay, I want to get some, I want to get something quick. Marijuana stock. I want to get, you know, uh, cryptocurrency. Or can I flip houses? All All of that is instant stuff. All that is flash in the pan. All that's quick stuff. Let me tell you something. There's no quick getting rich. There's no such thing as getting rich or wealthy quick. And if you don't know that by now, I I, I don't know. I don't know where you've been. There is. I'm going to say it again. There is no such thing as easy getting quick, quick, getting rich, quick strategy. There is none. There is none because you can go to the casino and hit a lick and make some money today. But I tell you something. If you go there for the next 10 days, I bet you wind up losing. 
because the odds are against you. Why? You can just look at the casinos and see how beautiful and marvelous they are. You ever been to Las Vegas? Go to Hard Rock. Look at that. They get, where do you think that money coming from? They're coming from you. Chance. What would you like to see enhanced or improved about your financial situation? If you know, if you know you need to do something. And the reason why I started talking about the cup and hold, because most people are losing money. I believe if I can stop you from losing and wasting money, you can gain more money. I'm going to say it again. Most people, if we can stop them from you from draining the tank, spending your money foolishly, you can get ahead. People come into the office and they're making $100,000 a year. This guy was spending $2,400 a month on food. That is 24% of his money is going on eating, chewing, swallowing, and going to the bathroom and releasing it. 24% of his money. See, if I can get you to stop mismanaging and wasting that what you have, you've already got a raise. So a lot of people that want more, they're not taking care of what that, that they do have, what you have been blessed. This is the spiritual principle for a prosperous life book. Yes. That's why I need you to understand the base. We got to get the foundation. What is going on here, people, with your lives? You don't need to have rocket science. You don't need to be that. You need to have the basic principles. You got a call here? I got Professor Keith. Let's, let's let Professor Keith on. I thought he was in Atlanta. Couldn't hear me way up there. Hey, Professor, can you hear me? I can hear from anywhere I am. <laughs> you smarty pants. <laughs> <laughs> you smarty pants. <laughs> you been listening to the show, brother? Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm hearing you um, de- deliver the the um, the appropriate sermon because we all have to, to, to understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, if you're not handling what you got. Uh, yeah. More, more can't come in. You know, and, and that's a spiritual, that's a, a law, man. How are you going to get more? How are you going to get more and you're not handling and being a good servant of that which you have? And most people don't understand that, Keith. They just want more and more and more. But they got two cell phones. They got direct TV, cable TV. They're paying $800 a month for a car just to drive up and down the street. And then they're paying the insurance on top of that. And then they're playing $400 a week for lottery. No, this guy said $400 a month for lottery. He actually, he actually had $400 a month allocated toward the lottery. That's $4,800. He ain't hit yet. I asked him how long he been doing that. He said for about four or five years. And he's not, so, six, so, and he's not yeah. 16 years old, Keith. So without, so, without, so without counting hard, five grand times five years is 25 grand. As, like I said, brother, if I can, if we can just cut out the losses, we ain't have to worry mm-hmm. about trying to get the gains. If we can cut out the lo- losses and the mismanagement, we've already got some gains. You follow me? We, we made more money. You follow me? No question. No question. No question. So yeah. one of the questions here I, I, I want to ask the, 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 you know, the radio listeners is, what would you ideally like to accomplish with the strategies that you're using right now. Some people say, what strategy, Robert? Okay, so if you don't have a strategy, how you think you're going to accomplish something? What would you ideally like to accomplish with the strategy, economic strategy that you're using right now? No strategy or do you have a strategy? What, what would you like to accomplish? Well, well, well here's, here's, here's the situation once again. It's not so much the, 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 uh, the answer, it's the question. If you ask what's the strategy, and somebody says, I don't have a strategy, the, the, the response is, yes, you do. You're doing something, and if you're doing it and you're doing it unconsciously, then you're employing a strategy and you don't even know what it's, what it's doing for you. You're right. But, but, but something happens. when you Every time you get a paycheck, there are some things that you do. And whatever those things are, that's your strategy. That's true. That's true. It's, it's like someone is planting corn and you talk to them and they got a sad face on. You say, well, what, what's wrong? And it says, I, 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 I want to get some collards. Uh, every time I, I look in harvest time, it's corn coming up. 
but I, I've been expecting collards or cabbage. But every time I, 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 I harvest time come, I keep getting corn. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> you know, you know that was most. You know, ninety percent of people. That's what they, that's what's happening. You know that, right? <laughs> they, they they want more, but they wishing and they pray, and then they go to church and say, "God, God, please, what's up? What's up? God, please." Uh, even though I'm pointing, even though I'm planting corn, why can't I get some collards or some cabbage? You know, you 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 reap what you sow. So that's nasty. That's nasty what you just said. That's very what? nasty. I, I don't think it's very nasty. Why, why, why do you say that? Why you call it that? <laughs> when you, when you, when you well, could you go back and look at your bag, at your, at your seed bag, please? Right. What are you? What are you? <laughs> right. You, you, you know we get what we, we get what we plant. You know what we deserve. You know that, right? You don't get what you want. You you get what you deserve and what you have the ability to handle. You know that. I mean, there's no sense in you, you know, saying I want something different. H- how are you going to want something different? Did you do something different? H- how you want more? How are you going to get more? That's like telling your car. Car, I'm only pressing the gas pedal to go 20 miles an hour, but I wish I was going 100. Or I wish I was going 70. How, how can you, even a car won't, that's not even, that's not even logical. That, that's that's not a law. You have to press more to get more, don't you? No question. Okay. A next, another question here. Now, you think most people have a problem with this or can they answer this? This question I ask you is, what is your process for making decisions? I want to say that again. People that are listening to me in Radio Land, ask yourself, when you make a decision, what's the process? How do you go? You have a board meeting? Who do you talk to? I mean, what's your process for making a decision? If I gave you a good strategy, I looked at your whole situation. I looked at where you are now. I analyzed your situation. I diagnosed it. And then I prescribed financial medicine to help you to get from this place to that place. How do you, what's your process for making a decision? What will say, okay, green light, let's go. I mean, what, 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 what do you do? Do you sit there and listen to the voices that come in your head, the fear and doubt? I mean, you're scared to pull it. You're scared to pull the trigger. I mean, what, what do you do? What is your process for making decisions? Keith, what do you think most people will say? I just think about it and, and um, sad. Make it, and just, just go. Yeah, but a lot of people, a lot of people I don't, I don't, don't. I don't know that there's, I don't know that there's a, uh, I don't know if anybody if they have a checklist, you know. Say okay, well, a does it, does this make financial sense? B is it in line with my, with my priorities? C will it take me off uh, course? I don't know that we do that. Well, Kiva, I think a lot of people, you know, make in their process making decision based on how easy it is. Don't you think that has something to do the ease of it, the sacrifice that's involved? If they have to give up something in order to get something, some people don't want to give up something. The guy said he didn't want to give up going to the strip club every week in order for him to save and pay off his student loans. I said, listen, I got a plan where you can pay off your student loans. Instead of taking 40 years to pay off your student loans, I have a strategy where you can actually invest your money at the same time. You pay off all them student loans. Instead of 40 years, you pay them off in six years. But you have to put in, invest, $400 $400 a month. Now, at that point, he has to make a decision, don't he? He has to make a decision on sacrifice. What is he willing to give up in order to get what he needs? And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you always, we always have to make a decision. It's always a sacrifice. You can't even get into heaven without, without giving up some sinning. You got to stop something. I mean, you, you, in, order to, in order to get on the highway and not get a ticket, you got to obey the law, at least when you see the police coming. <laughs> you got to slow down when you see the trooper. You can't just be disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, don't, make a, don't make a U-turn in front of the police. <laughs> right, don't right in front of the man. I mean, well, at least when he go to sleep or he not looking, at least when he go to the donut shop, then make a U-turn. I mean, you, you, you know, there, there's trade-offs, there's boundaries, but you're going to have to 
make a decision. And you and a lot of us make decisions based on the ease. But I'm going to tell you one thing. And you can't get around this because I don't try. Because my mother called me lazy my whole adult. I mean, as I was growing up from, 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 from a kid, my whole youth, my nickname was lazy. Sorry. Sorry, boy. Sorry. You didn't want to cut the grass. You didn't want to clean up. You didn't want to. Do nothing. Just sorry. 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 Junior, Robert Junior, you just sorry. I kept saying, no, nah, I'm going to have somebody for that, mom. So even though she was telling me I'm sorry, I didn't believe it. Because I didn't want to be sorry. I wanted to be prosperous. I wanted to travel. I wanted to live and, 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 and have a good time. So I did something. I had to trade off. I had to learn how to read and study and stop hanging around my friends. Even though they kept saying, Rob, come on, man, we're getting ready to go party. I said, no, nah, I'll party later sacrifice. So most of us keep make our decisions based on the sacrifice, what we got to give up, the trade off, what we have to do. And a lot of times, if you make the easy choice, you're going to lose in the end. Make the hard choice. Do what's hard now. I promise you. If you're 400 pounds, if you're trying to get down to 200 pounds, you're going to have to push away from the cake. You're going to have to push away from eating a whole piece of pie. You're going to have to Push away from eating all, drinking all them sodas and all that sugar and eating all that bread. You just going to have to push away. If you 400 pounds and you want to get down to 200, you're going to have to give up something. So if you ain't making no money and you need to make more money, you're going to have to give up something. So that's the first thing. So what is the process of you making decision? What do you think about? You know, that, that, that brings us to, to um, a term that we've heard a lot in this current um, climate both um, politically and financially, that quid pro quo. Yeah, something for something. Right. And you, and that example, and I, you know, I don't, I don't want to uh, reveal anything unsavory about myself. But when I studied that whole with that you just talked about that strip club experience. Okay. There are only two conversations you can have in the strip club. One is, I think I like them. Or two, I think they like me. And either one of them will leave you broke. There's a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so, but, but both of them lead to a disaster. <laughs> so, 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 Keith, if, if you're in a strip club, you're saying that, that uh, most guys be saying that they like him? They, he, you think they well, like well, him? I like what I see, yeah. You like what you see, but you, you think that I mean, if, you said if you say I like what I see, that means it will cost you more. Oh man! <laughs> well, good thing I don't go down. <laughs> yeah, I said. I, I, so it didn't take long to say. You know, this might not really be a, 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 a like you said, a sound investment experience. No, not when you can pay off your student loans. Not not when you can pay off your home. I I I got a strategy. You can pay off your home in less than nine years, man, by saving in, in the savings plan. You can use your money twice. Yeah. There's a strategy that you can lose, use them. The banks use your money 10 times. I got a strategy that you can be in your own bank and lose, use your money minimum twice. And if you're really good, we can use it three times. So then what you have to do is alter is alter a person's uh, reference to what they call fun. If getting that done, you have to say, okay, now this is a fun experience in your life. Well, I, I don't know. Once you get past 40, once once you pass 50, I mean, fun. I mean, when I go off on conferences and, and, and people ask me when I, I'm in conference, I'm, matter of fact, in March, I'm going to be in Deadwood, South Dakota. Now, when I come back, I know some people going to say, Rob, did you have fun? I mean, I... I, I the answer would be yes, because I enjoy what it is. But, Keith, every time somebody asks me, did I have fun? I don't... I, I, to me, I have fun when you're a kid. I don't have fun. I really don't. When I go and I learn something, I don't have fun. Literally, I don't, I don't have fun. Fun to me is giggling and, 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 and you know, girl, 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 you're just fun. I mean, you know, you're, you're, I don't know what fun is anymore. I, as I, when I became an adult, I stopped having fun. Believe it, I'm telling you. I don't know what fun is. When you're playing football and you're an optimist or whatever, you're having fun. But, but, I, but I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what having fun is as I, as I as I became a man, I really don't. I, I, I enjoy myself or I learn something, but f the word fun, I just I, when I think of that, I think of childlike. I think of inexperience. I think of adolescence when I think of fun. Okay. Occurs Let me ask. Fun occurs at every level. 
It's just that the, the definition and what goes into it changes. That's all. Okay. All right. But I, I don't That's like to, I don't like to say I'm 60 years old. I'm having fun. That, that no, I'm having fun. Every, every time I pick up a book and I walk away and I've learned something different, yeah. that was fun. Well, when I say fun, I think about, you know, little June bug and I'm eight years nah. old. No, 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 no. Just it's perception, the way how we perceive stuff. I, I just don't. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think of that no more. Okay, let me ask you another question. When it comes to your money, the one thing you care about most is what, Radio Land? Listeners. Ask yourself that. When it comes to your money, ask yourself, the one thing you care about most is what? Now, you got to be able to answer that. Just, I mean, be honest. You say, I never thought about that. When it comes to your money, the one thing you care about most is what? Keeping it? Making it grow? Not paying taxes? When it comes to your money, the one thing you care about most is what? Okay, so I want you to answer that. The other question I, I'm going to ask you is, is there anything that keeps you up at night? Your old IRS? Your house in foreclosure? You, 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 you want to retire at 65 and you only have $5,000 in the bank? All right, let's, let's get Frank. Frank's on the phone. Let's let's. We're out of time, so let's let's talk to Frank Keith. Frank, how you doing, brother? Uh, pretty good. How you doing? Uh, I'm seventy. Uh, no, I'm sixty eight years old. I'd like to know some good options for me later on down the road for mandatory distribution. Good program, and I think I'm gonna listen to your answer. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. So Frank says he's seventy years old, and he wants to know some good programs for mandatory distribution. Well, since January, now you don't have to have that mandatory distribution at seventy and a half. Now they if they kick the can on down the road for you, you don't, have, you don't have to take mandatory distribution from your retirement accounts until you are 72. And when you take the mandatory distribution when you're 72, if you don't really need the money because they're making you, because if, if they wasn't making you, more people probably just leave it in there and let it grow, grow, grow. So when you take it out, you don't have to. They, they want you to take it out because the IRS is, you know, government won't taxes. They want to get some taxes. You've been... You've been making money, and, and, and the tax has been postponed for a long time. Now, if you turn 70, uh, if you turn 70 um, years old, uh, 70 and a half years old, 72 years old, and, and start in January 20 going forward, you know, you don't have to take money out. You're not forced to take money out of your retirement plans until you're 72. So if, if that's the case, then there's a lot of good strategy you can use. I would say that, you know, some of the strategy is, is – is to um, put it into things that's going to help your legacy. You know, I would say that. I would say put it in a good cash value life insurance, especially if you're healthy. Or there's a great strategy, Frank, that I, that I can tell you about. But since you've been listening to me for years and never came to me, I know you went to other somebody else. I don't want to give you such fantastic information so you can go share it with your other financial advisor. So if you call me, on Monday, I'll tell you in my office. As you've been listening, I recognize his voice. And I, I, before he even retired, he was listening to me and Linda. And then after he retired, he still listened to me and Linda. So I don't know if he take the information and take it to his, his guy that's not telling him good stuff. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so this time, Frank, I got you. If you want to hear this good stuff that I have, brother, some really strat- fantastic stuff that I'm pretty sure your, other, your financial advisor don't know about, call my office on Monday. And then I'll... I'll, I'll I'll share it with you, all right? 305 is the office number. 305 is the area code. The number is 825-1444. Eric, Fabio, Linda, Ms. Stewart, Mr. East, I got you. You have five calls that call. We're going to make sure we get that spiritual principle for a prosperous living out to you. If you call the office and give us your information, your address, and we'll send that right out to you. You know, these questions that I, that I asked the radio listening audience, I, want, I asked a question because I really want you all to let it, you know, uh, marinate inside of you. I want you to have a come to Jesus type moment. I want you to have a truth because you have to be truthful to yourself. In order for you to go to the next level, you have to have face off. You have to look in the mirror and say, listen, you know, I'm not where I want to be. But that is the beginning of wisdom. That's like going to the AA 
Alcohol Anonymous, you know, uh, and, 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 and standing up and say, hey, you know, my name is John Doe and I'm an alcoholic. That's the first beginning of recovery, wisdom, facing the truth. So when it comes to your financial affairs and where you are financially, you have to do that. You have to do that. You don't have to go to church and do it. You don't have to do it in front of a crowd. But you go in the bathroom and look in the mirror and just imagine, just say it to yourself. Let yourself hear yourself. Say it to yourself. You know, it's two of you inside of there. You know, it's just not you. All of us have two of us inside of us, you know, and one is one of us is called one, one, one of the two is called a conscious mind and other ones called a subconscious mind. All of us have a little genie, a little genie inside of us that we don't know how to use is a subconscious mind. But whatever you think and feel, that little genie going to make appear, going to make happen. Don't worry about when and how, but whatever you impress on the subconscious mind, that little genie inside of you, that second inside of you, if you're fearful and what do you have fear have come upon you, that's because you put so much impression on fear, the little genie made it happen for you. So don't dwell, don't think on bad things. Think on good things. Press on good things. And then and then you gotta also you gotta you gotta you gotta make, take some action. You just can't have a thought. All of us have eighty thousand more than eighty thousand thoughts a single a day. The problem is most of our thoughts we think in the same old thoughts. Think a new thought, but you gotta act on your new thoughts. When you hear this, the words that's coming out of my mouth and something is resonating to you you know you got to say listen you know i gotta act because nothing uh you know uh, just a thought is without action is nothing you agree keith no question so so so, so you got to say okay i got to be proactive and the reason why you can't when you're gonna when, when are you gonna star in, your, in, in in the movie of your life you the you the director you the producer you know you're the actor you know, you 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 the screenwriter. You write the script. When, when are you going to come forth and say, "Listen, I ain't playing no more. I'm sick and tired of this. I don't care who see me or whatever. Let me go and get some help for myself." And then you come to the office. And you call our office. We can talk over the phone, or you know, and or you can come and have a conference call with me, or just come down. I ain't gonna charge you anything, but I'm gonna have a real heart to heart with you. And I have clients all walks of life: black, white, Spanish, yellow, I mean, blue, everybody. I got people that look like that. Listen, I got people that 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 look like white nationalists. They might be white nationalists, but they say, "Black boy with these glasses on, you telling me the truth and the whole truth, and I can recognize the truth, and I'm gonna do it." They don't want me to marry their daughter. Thank God, I'm already married to Natalie. But they want the information that I have. Information. They don't care what color you are. If it's good, it's good. If you're gonna help me, don't hurt me. Help me. I want to hear about it. So if you want to hear about something good and learn about something that's good and down to earth, I'm not gonna talk over your head. Call the Henderson Financial Group. Take this number down, 305-825-1444. Say you heard me on the radio on 12, 10 a.m. station, the man, or you know me streaming live, and you can repeat this. You can look at this YouTube. It's called 1210 The Man. I got to go. Don Daly and Rosie in the studio. And if I said anything to make you uncomfortable or Make you, you just didn't feel right. I promise you, they're going to play something that's going to lift you up. Going to make you feel, forget about your troubles, at least for a moment. But ask yourself, what are you doing to improve your life? We got to go. Stay tuned next week. See you same place, same time. Much peace, love, and happiness. Out of here.